And Moses joins us for a first look at sports with some news from the pebbled ice. The Boundary uh, Ford Curling Classic entered the playoff draw this morning with the quarterfinals. Yeah, you know what? And it had some hometown flavor a little bit in this one. Of course, we're talking about Meatstones, Jill Shumay, not too far out from our border city. Uh, took the long road to qualify after falling short in the A event. Uh, Shumay found herself dropping down to the C event, taking on Carrie Galusha in the 10th and last night eventually pulling out the victory. So she would now face Trish Paulson from Saskatoon in the first quarter final. After Paulson taking a one nothing lead in the second end, Shumay with last rock, lying one comes up perfect. The draw weight capturing the deuce and a 2-1 lead. Third end now, Shumay lying two, but a chance for Paulson to score two with a double takeout. She'll knock both red stones, but the shooter doesn't stick around either. It's just a single for Paulson. Tied up at two. After a Shumay single in the fourth, fifth then Paulson looking to avoid giving up a steal. Her shot loses steam. It's now 4-2 Shumay. Paulson comes right back in the sixth with one in the eight foot. All Paulson needs to do is just draw and the perfect weight is there. She's now leading 5-4. Jill Shumay here in the eighth. Paulson needing another draw. Full eight. And now Paulson's in the lead. So in the tenth, Shumay down two, lying one. She would comfortably tie things up, sending it to extras where Paulson with hammer needing to hit and stick for the point. And she would advancing to the semis eight to seven was the final. Elsewhere in the quarterfinals, Amber Holland's rink skipped by team's third Jolene Campbell uh, wins this one. Uh, Holland, of course, in Winnipeg as the alternate for Val Sweeting at the Roar of the Rings. Uh, they win it in nine ends by a score of 10 to 6. And 2010 Olympic silver medalist Cheryl Bernard trailed 5 1 heading into the eighth end. She does chip away, but the damage has been done. Allison McInnes would advance to the semifinals 5 4. Now, the Boundary 4 2011 champ, Jesse Kaufman, only took eight ends to beat Brett Barber 9 to 3. So that meant Kaufman and Paulson would be in one of the semifinals. Fourth then, Paulson leading 2-1 and Kaufman with hammer lying one. She'll draw to the forefoot and pick up the pair, taking a 3-2 lead. The two would exchange singles till the seventh end, where Kaufman would then need the run back to knock Paulson's stone on the button, only to knock out her stone in the process. It's a steal of two, giving Paulson the 5-4 advantage. Kaufman would get that back in the eighth. The draw for the full four is on point. To the tenth end we go, Kaufman with shot. Paulson has the hammer all tied up. She would just wreck on the guard, which means Kaufman earns her second berth to the finals in three years with 6-5 win. Kaufman will now meet of course, Amber Holland's rank in the final. The Lloydminster, excuse me, the Lloydminster Bobcats picked up a single point in two games this past weekend as they finished the month of November with a 4-5 and 2 record. Now, despite being shut out in the win column, the Cats once again outshot Drumheller and Cameras by a combined 60 to 45 margin. Head coach Gary Van Herwey says although they may have thrown more pucks on net, the chances were still not there. We played two real gritty and I guess you could almost call them greasy kind of to teams. And they didn't get as many pucks to the net, but they got a lot more bodies there. And anytime you can get pucks and bodies that meet at the net, you got a chance of results. When you're just getting a puck there, and we've talked about it a lot, goaltenders in this league are going to stop the majority of them. And we're just not having success with just shooting pucks and out shooting teams. The Cats will now have five days off before playing a pair of games against the Drayton Valley Thunder, who have pushed the Bobcats to the limit in both meetings going to overtime. We're not holding ourselves uh, ahead of them or thinking that this is going to be an easy weekend for us. This may be one of the toughest weekends we've had. And if we don't work real hard and if we don't do the little things, we're going to get ourselves into a, into a hole.